Welcome back to another episode, everyone. Today we are going to be installing Live Scope on my boat right here. You guys are already seeing it. It's already done, but we're going to go over the process. I filmed it all and we're going to throw it in right here in a minute. But before we jump into the video, I just wanted to come on and thank my sponsors, Mystery Tackle Box, Catch Company, and Carl's Bait and Tackle. Right now, they are on the last day of the Cyber Week sale. They are running 20% off on the MTB boxes. If you guys want to go pick one up, go pick one up. Use code SAVE20. I'll put it right here in the screen, and I will also probably put it in the description. So use code SAVE20. You'll get 20% off your Mystery Tackle Box. Other than that, after today, it'll go to 15% off your Mystery Tackle Box. And I believe that's through Christmas. So make sure to do that if you guys are interested. It's a great box for your angler, whether you're going to be buying it for your son, your husband, maybe some relative of you, or anything. Really, it all is, it's a great present. It has every single thing that you could even ask for in the tackle box, a bunch of new stuff that you've never used, and it'll help you become a very versatile fisherman and get you some more baits into your tackle box. Also, don't forget, Santa Carl is coming with all the best stuff. So make sure you head over to Shop Carl's, pick some stuff up too, get the subscription. It is worth it. It's like $49 for a year and you can save big money on it. I know I got one. I order a lot of my stuff from there now. Um, a lot of the stuff that I was already buying in stores is on the website. So you can order it. You can get discounts or store credit and it helps a lot. So make sure you guys check out Carl's Bait and Tackle and Mystery Tackle Box. I will have both linked in the description and i'll also put up that code for the 20 percent off your mystery tack box if you order today in the description but anyways let's hop into the video of installing live scope on the boat so now today what we're going to be doing we're going to be installing the garmin live scope on my boat picked this up there was a deal going on for a rebate and decided why not get this so we're going to get it installed on my boat i've been wanting it for a long time so we're going to be opening this up, showing you everything that comes in the package, and then explaining what it is, and then we'll get on with the install and go from there. So, let's see what's in the box. First thing, as soon as you open it up, is your black box. Now, this is what the LiveScope hooks into. It is what runs everything. It's what networks the LiveScope to your fish finder that you're running it on. So, this is the first thing that you get when you open the box. I already opened it before, so there's gonna be a divider I already took out. You've got a little instructions for the mount that comes with the live scope. You have whatever you wanna call that. You got this rubber piece, which will go on your mount. This is your mount for your trolling motor, which I'm not gonna be using. And then you've got your live scope transducer right here. A, it looks like power cable that's going to go to your black box and your networking cable that's going to go from your black box to your unit. This is just the networking cable. You also have two adapters because the adapter to plug into your unit is a little bit bigger. They just do the six foot cable and then they do the extension just so you don't have to worry about feeding such a large diameter uh, cable up through your gunnel and into your bow or wherever else you're going to put your unit so then you can feed the smaller one and then once it's there you can connect this cable so that's what the connector is you got your that they give you a mount for if you're going to put it on your uh on your transom but we're not going to worry about that and then you got your cable connectors right there some nuts and bolts probably won't end up needing them because i also picked up the perspective mode mount this perspective mode mount, it comes with everything that you probably see right here, just that little bracket. It goes onto your trolling motor shaft, so then you can just hook it onto there, and you can rotate your uh, your live scope transducer from down scan to front scan to the actual full live scope, and then also over to perspective mode, which almost works as, I think it's 120 or 150 degree um, angle of almost like 360 imaging, but it's live. So this is what the mount I'm going to be putting my live scope on. But first, I want to talk about a few other things that you're going to need probably for installing this. So one thing you're going to want to do if you're installing this is you're going to be wanting to run designated cables from your battery straight up to wherever you're going to have your black box at. For this, I already ran it. I ran cables straight from my batteries all the way up the gunnel 
and two, the bow of my boat, they're all underneath my panel. So if you have not done that, you're going to want to do that. You don't want to tie this into a fuse panel with the little wires that are in there. You're going to risk some voltage drop where your black box won't work or your fish finder won't work. You're just going to, it's not going to be good. So I ran eight gauge wire from the back all the way up to the front and that I've got separate sets, one or two sets for my fish finders. And then I've also got one set that is going to be going to my live scope. For my live scope, I decided I am going to install it in this compartment right here. So that's really all you got to know. But that runs to the back. It goes into my switch. That's my main power switch for my boat. But also one thing I've heard is you're going to want to install a separate switch. So I got a little uh, on off switch right here. I'm going to wire into my front panel. That way I don't have to worry about um, my live scope being on when my boat's off and it draining my battery or my live scope black box burning up or my transducer burning up, any of that. So I'm probably going to wire this in. I've got an extra switch up here and if, it's, if I can figure out how to wire up that switch, I'll wire up that one. If not, I'll wire in this one. You're also going to need some crimps for your wires. You can either, these are just regular crimps and I'm going to be going over with some heat shrink. If you want to go with the regular marine grade crimps that have the heat shrink built into them, go ahead, whatever you want to do. But that's what we're going to be doing. I also picked this up at Cabela's for my live scope unit. It is a Garmin 106. So we're going to be taking off my 9.3 SV up here, putting on my 106 real quick so then we can hook all my wires up to it. And once I ended up getting my dual graph mount for the front is when I'll put my 9.3 back on. But for now, we're just going to swap it out with this. So let's hop into it and get the graph taken out. I think what we're going to do is we're going to get the 106 exchanged with the 9.3 and then we're going to start on the transducer cable so I can get it wrapped up um, under my bow panel and then get it, figure out how I want to run it and how far I can run it into this compartment right here before I mount my black box. So I'm going to install this without showing you guys. It's just a unit. If you guys want to see how to install different units, go back on my page. I've got multiple different videos on how to install graphs on my page of the 9.3 SVs, hummingbirds, everything. So if you want to see how to install units, go check those out. But I'm going to get this swapped out and we'll get going. All right. Now that we got the graph switched over, we are going to be going and doing this, the perspective mount and hooking up the actual transducer to it and going from there. The transducer is very specific to which side of the shaft your fish finder or your uh, mount is going to go on. If it's going to be going on the starport or port side of the boat, and that's what these are for. So we're going to have to see which direction we're going to put it on. I'm guessing it's going to be on this side, so we'll have to use the bracket accordingly. But for now, let's get it all put together and uh, start putting it on the shaft of the trolling motor. Sorry guys, I, it's starboard and port side. I said starport for some reason. But we got the main bracket right here put on. Um, we're going to be tightening it down here in a second. But actually on the bracket, it shows which side is which. So starboard and port. And as you guys can see, my trolling motor is facing, or I put it down with the starboard side. So we're going to be putting the starboard bracket on. It's just the bracket labeled S. So let's get this put on and... Uh, after we get this tightened down and then this put on, we can get the transducer put on. One quick thing about this bracket. I would suggest when you're tightening it down, go the upper right, bottom left, just go diagonals of each other. That way you get it tightened down evenly and you don't have any issues with that. So next we are going to just put this on here and we're going to be wanting it to the side because that's the side that the transducer is going to be on. All right, one thing I just noticed, as soon as I put this on, because of the way the bracket is, the transducers, if the trolling motor is facing straight out, the transducers angled up a little bit. So I'm gonna uh, loosen up the bracket right here and then go back through with loosening this, readjusting it to be straight in line with my trolling motor head. So we're gonna do that and then move on. All right, now the transducer is on. I think it's the right way. I'm going to go back and double check after I'm done. Um, it's cold out. I'm just trying to get it on for now. 
and then if I need to make adjustments later, I can. But now we are going to be running the cable up the trolling motor shaft along with my other cable, and then we are going to feed it into my front uh, panel. So, first thing, make sure you leave enough cable so you can adjust your transducer. So what I'm going to do is since the farthest adjusted setting is the perspective mode down here, I'm going to set it to there and then I'm going to attach it to my trolling motor shaft. One thing, I've been told not to use zip ties with these because there's a bunch of little cables in here that could cause some issues if they're smashed. So until I get the Ultrex cable management system from a few different things, the snaps that go on here, I'm just going to be using some tape. I'm going to tape it on here. I do that with all my wires so I don't smash them with zip ties. So we're going to be using some tape right here. So eventually I'm going to get the troll tamer or a troll jacket for my trolling motor cable. That way I can kind of clean up the wires a little bit, but for now it'll be okay. So there I left a little bit of slack in my line, as you guys can see, because you need to leave a little bit so that when your trolling motor spins around on spot lock or anything, or when you're just using it, that you don't pinch any cables or pull any cables. So I left some slack there and now we are back to the front. We're going to take off this panel and we're going to get working on how we are going to uh, get this cable or pull this cable through and get it mounted because I honestly have no idea how I want to put this cable through right now. All right, so I finally found a solution. In my networking cable kit I got yesterday, came with this grommet. So I found a drill bit the same size, one and an eighth. It should work pretty well. So we're gonna use this and I haven't decided for sure. I think I'm gonna run it. Um, I can probably run it right here on the inside over on this side on the bottom. So I'm gonna pull this up, cut this out and then finish running the transducer wire. It is finally done. Now just gotta get the stupid cord through, I think. There we go. Now we are cooking. So, got this grommet fit right here, and it is in. Wow, was that bad to freaking figure out. So, now I'm going to show you guys what I've got going on in here. My driver's side or starboard side rod locker. Um, as you guys may be able to see right here, there is a hole now. Oh, there we go. There's a hole now that I drilled right here to get into it. I'm eventually going to add another grommet just like that one into it, but for now I don't have another one. So I'm going to feed all the wires in through here and bring it down into that compartment from right here. And uh, that's where I'm going to have my black box at. So I'm going to feed all the cables that I need down through there. So my transducer cable, my power cable, and my networking cable. And we're going to go from there on finishing the installation. We are getting towards the end, finally, kind of. All right, so I just did one part thinking that I was recording. I believe I showed connecting this grommet and putting it all in, just cut a hole, slid the cord through it, and there, grommet's all good. And then I started feeding all the cords through the hole right here and into my compartment where my black box is gonna be. When I was sliding the power cord, I figured, well, I might as well just connect my power cords while I was here. So from my main power supply coming from the back of my boat, I connected the one positive from the back of the boat straight into the middle um, lever, the one going to the live scope box into the bottom, and then from here I've got to put a ground from the top to my main fuse panel right there. That's the last thing I got to do. I don't currently have any extra power cable for that or extra wire for that, so I've got to grab a little bit of power or wire for that, but now we're going to be switching to my rod locker to where all the cords are fed. So let's get the cables. There's the transducer, power cable, and the networking cable. So let's get them hooked up to the black box 
just so they don't fly back up into the slot. This cable here is to the transducer. Be very careful because there's 19 different pins in the black box that it has to be plugged into. So just be very, very careful putting it in. You don't want to bend any pins or anything. There we go. It slid in nice and easy. And all the cables are right here for the black box now. So now I gotta find out a place to put it. So for now, I need to get some more parts for this, so I'm not gonna show it. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking the box and I think you guys can see, I'm gonna be putting it right here on this side. With it being right there, I will be able to put it into my, or put the bolts straight into my center storage and I'll be able to hold them down right here and nut them down. So it'll be real solid. I'm worrying about on those rough days, if I just screw it in right here, that I'm gonna have issues with it bouncing around or possibly falling off. So I think that's what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna get about one and a half inch screws or bolts, I'm gonna drill holes through here and then put it on. So I'm not gonna show that because you know anybody can do that. So let's, uh, let's see what the final part is and uh, go from there. It is another day. It ended up getting too cold to stay out there, so I had to bring my boat inside. I didn't do anything else after that. I believe the last thing you guys saw was I fed the cables through my front panel down into my locker right here, and then I connected them all to my black box. The only thing left after that that I had to do is I ran this cable right here, which is the networking cable from the black box that I still had to hook up. I brought it up here to the front, I connected this little connector on it that they included in the box or in the package with the live scope and I just ran it up into the back of my unit right here. It's really the only other thing I did. I wired in my other fish finder right here and I networked this graph to this graph. So I've got my GT54 transducer hooked up to my 106. I've got my live scope hooked up and then I'm networked from the 106 to the 93. So then this 93 can read both the GT54 and the live scope if I really want it to. So I did all that, just kind of clean some wire stuff up right here. Nothing major that I think is dire for you to need for the installation of the live scope. But there it is, my setup up front. Got my dual graph mount, that's the other thing. I didn't have that when I was filming this video. I ordered it, got it in, and um, got this installed. So my dual graph mount right here, I've got a Garmin 93SV plus here, Garmin 106 UH, or Garmin 106 Ultra here with my live scope unit on my trolling motor. One thing I didn't mention that I found out, this bracket right here that we installed earlier in the video, there is on the front an S and a P, an S for the starboard side, a P for the port side. And I found that you wanted to put the S, like if, you if you're mounting it the way I am, you wanna put the S, line it up with the center of the shaft of the transducer, and then that'll line it up where it is now to where it's basically parallel with my trolling motor head. The only other thing I've got to do is I've got to drill or screw in the black box into the side of that rod locker on the inside of my boat, just so it doesn't fly anywhere, it doesn't break anything. Um, and it's not just banging and bouncing in my rod locker. So that's one of the only other things I need to do from there. And yeah, everything else is set up. I turned on my graphs, made sure that they were able to read the panoptics or live scope yesterday, and they did. So everything is finalized and that is how you install it. I know I tried to go over in detail in this video how you do some of this stuff. Some stuff came in really good, some stuff may not have been communicated very well by me. I'm sorry if it wasn't. I tried to be as specific as I could with as much knowledge that I have of installing it. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video of installing the live scope and how to do it. And if you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up. But thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.